Ayurveda and Astrology with Corey and Nishi, take nine in HD. Well, hello, Earthlings. All right, I've got my friend Nishi Pandit here. He's an astrologer. Some of you may already know of him. We've been getting along great while we've been here. Um, we're actually, well, take a guess where we're at. <laughs> um, we're hanging out, and I had some questions about Ayurveda and astrology and how that fits in. And yeah, Nishi just really impressed me with his uh, interpretation of a, of a random chart he didn't know and correctly uh, saw the dosha. And of course, sometimes it's easy, but sometimes it's a lot harder to see. So I wanted to have him on, talk a little bit about this, because this isn't a topic that people actually go over a lot. It, I haven't found that much information about it. So um, welcome, Nishi. Thanks, Corey. It's been cool being here, and it should be interesting to get into. Yeah. So, so he's specialized in um, Ayurveda and also has even studied some Tibetan medicine stuff, right? That's right. Yeah, and you've also been experimenting with some of these homeopathy, That's right. some of the stuff that uh, Ernst has been doing lately. Okay, so uh, so yeah, this kind of just walk me through. How do you determine the natal constitution? Yeah. Well, the chart really as a whole is a dynamic of influences. So the constitution is not really something that I think you can identify just through one factor. It's a mingling of several factors and yeah. learning how to read that mingling and how that translates into a person's constitution is really key. Yeah. So it's like an astrology reading in general. You really have to learn how to see how all of these things are interacting to make a picture. So it's not just like, okay, Leo rising, your pitta. You can't say that. Yeah. Right? Because there's a lot more going on, right? Exactly. I mean, okay. you'll find people with ascendants like Leo or Taurus, and you can't just pin them as Pitta or Katha. Right. You know, okay. there'll be all kinds of constitutions based on the Lagna. Okay. But you start with that, probably. Start right? with that. It's yeah. definitely, you know, the ascendant is the body, it is that concrete physicality okay. of a person. So it is a place to start. Look at where that planet's placed. So let's start with this chart. It's okay. a Leo ascendant. Right. Okay. So based on that, we can say, okay. This person's probably going to be Pitta, right? Okay. Well, let's see if it, if it pans out. All right. So, Sun. Sun is placed in Taurus. Okay, that's an Earth sign. So, part of what I'm doing, of course, I'm looking at elements. Right. Okay, because okay. the doshas are what we use to identify constitution in Ayurveda. But the foundation of doshas is elements. Okay. Doshas are just a way of describing the play of the elements in a person's physiology. Right. Okay. And how that determines their makeup altogether. So, doshas are function, you know. Okay. How do they relate to form elements? Okay. okay. So, Sun is in Taurus with Jupiter and Mercury. There are a lot of planets in Taurus, right? That's what I'm seeing. All right. So, especially the Ascendant Lord is there. So now we have something augmenting just the sense that this is a Pitta person because Taurus is an Earth sign. Okay. So that's like more of a Kapha connotation. Right. Okay. Now, Ten House is also there. That's a you know it's an important house. So, make some so this, is, this is a prominent zone, you know, prominent energy in the chart now. Now with Mercury and Jupiter with the ruling planet, how would you kind of interpret that? Well, Jupiter is also a Kapha planet. Okay, so right? that adds more. So that adds more, and Mercury's, you know, Mercury is mixed, right. doshically mixed. Okay. So, all the connotations of that are there. Okay. But definitely, I think we're leaning toward a lot of Earth and Kapha here. Okay. With Jupiter. It all being in Taurus, Lagna Lord is here, Sun in Taurus. So you might okay. say there's like one Pitta, but then there's more of Kappa from when you look at the actual place. Where right, so far. Okay. All right. Okay. But now let's go to Aries. Mars is in Aries, its own sign. Right. So strong Mars placement. A strong Mars is always going to indicate a lot of fire element in a person's chart, right. unless there's some serious cancellation to that. Yeah, okay. So right now we're seeing a person who's... Strong fire element, right? They're a Leo person. They got a strong Mars. Okay. So there's a lot of Pitta going on. We can just assume that there's a lot of Pitta in this person's constitution. But what else is there? Because the thing about constitution is that all three are there in yeah. everybody's case. It's not like you don't have It's something. like what has the most of it, though? Yeah, we're looking, at, we're looking at, you know, what's predominating. Okay. You know, what's the leading pattern, right? Yeah. Everybody's all, got all planets right. influencing them, too, right? Yeah. So same thing. So would you say, as of right now, it's like... Mainly Kappa and Pitta because of the Mars and the Leo and then the Dwarfs. Yeah, okay. I'm, looking, I'm seeing a dual constitution so far. All right. Um, now Saturn's in Pisces, Jupiter's sign. Saturn's an air planet. It's in a water sign. 
So that's bringing some vata into it, you know, so there's a little bit of vata kapha going on there. What about since it's in the eighth house, like how would you maybe interpret that? Is that, I don't know. I mean, if nothing, it's okay, but. Yeah, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really add anything. Okay, cool. With that connotation. All right. Definitely first house is important. I think the tenth house also is important, you know, in a way, because it's shaping how a person's expressing themselves, the way in which they're moving, you know. So mm -hmm. there's something about that that's important constitutionally. All right, so then what would you, uh, you were kind of talking about elements and stuff. So Yeah, you, so, yeah. so here's the moon in Libra, so that's okay. an air sign. All right. Okay? So the moon's another important planet for constitution, especially, this is a, this is a woman's chart. Okay. So... More. Moon is going to have a lot more influence going on there. All right, got it. Uh, moon is also in opposition to Taurus, where we have Jupiter, Sun, and Mercury. So there's definitely, so this is the Vata part of it. You know, like I said, everybody's all three. So there's some Vata. So there's some Vata, right? But so far, we're not really getting a sense that there's like a ton of Vata going on here. You mm -hmm. know? Okay. Earth, fire, strong. Here's the Vata. You know, there's moon some is in Libra. There's okay. some of that. Um, we're not going to worry about outer planets when it comes to constitution. Uh, Rahu is in a water sign, Cancer, but that's really more going to be psychological. I mean, if there's some other planet there, that would be interesting. Okay. But it's yeah, not, I, I mean, you could yeah. relate it back to the moon, being in the moon sign. So if a planet was... But that just adds more Vata. Okay, so if a planet was with Rahu there, that planet would be kind of thrown off maybe or something? Well, that planet's element would be driven into excess. That's gotcha. how I would look at it. Because Rahu is always expanding the energy, yeah. so it's always kind of amping it up, true, right? Yeah. So... And vice versa with K2, it'll be more where they're suppressed elementally. So you can get more of a pathological portrait, you know, what the person needs to unlock. Yeah, which yeah. is, I guess, not the same as constitution, but if you're doing Ayurveda, you're doing health, you're trying to heal, so it's still... Right, and that's why, it's, that's why, you know, when it comes to constitution, it's really important to understand what are we looking at, you know. Because there's a lot of idealism around finding a person's prakriti or their mm -hmm. original nature before mm -hmm. they experience any imbalances. Mm -hmm. But you can't really find that nature in a person because a person is born, you know? When you're born, you're already... Okay, You're yeah. already experiencing karma. You're already imbalanced. You already have K2 bringing all its influences, right? So there's already an imbalance. And as a person matures, as they get older and older, it becomes harder and harder to really see through that. Okay, so for you guys that maybe don't know, there's this idea that you have your prakruti and your vikruti this, uh, tell them a little bit about that because that's something that um, you know some people might be confused about. Okay, so prakriti is a person's original nature. I mean, prakriti mm -hmm. means nature. Gotcha. Okay, it's often translated as original nature to contrast with vikriti, which is that which is layered on top of it. Okay. Gotcha. So the way to understand it is that prakriti is the person existing prior to their imbalances, prior to all doshic vitiation, and vikriti is the pathology that's layering on top of that. So if you can find a person's constitution, then you can find you know, the appropriate way they're supposed to live in harmony with their original nature before all of their imbalances have layered mm -hmm. on top of it, mm -hmm. and so on. There's all kinds of ways to go into that. Okay. But at a basic level, prakriti is the healthy state, vikriti is the layered imbalances on top of it. That makes sense. And prakriti is supposed to be used to define a person's constitution. Okay. So this is, your constitution is your prakriti, you know. Okay. So you're by nature this, vata pitta or kapha, vata pitta pitta kapha, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, vikriti is the imbalance you're experiencing on top of that. So any, like a kapha person can be experiencing vata vikriti, okay? Right. Meaning okay. at the moment, at the present moment, mm -hmm. they're experiencing a vata imbalance. So vikriti is always now. That's the key. Mm -hmm. So that's probably more important? Vikriti is the most, is really the only thing that's relevant. In my opinion, gotcha. Um, okay. People might disagree with me on this. That's fine. No, but no, I think I think Vikruti is the only thing that's relevant because the purpose of Ayurveda is not to just simply determine you know where you once were and things like that. It's really to determine what's happening with you now and how that's relevant. Because okay. when you're talking about healing people, you're looking at the person as they are now. And so what you're dealing like, with yeah. is Vikruti. Yeah. And so there's like layers and layers. So you don't. You, there's no point trying to get to that core level until you've worn out, or you don't even do Yeah, I mean, you get a strong right. sense. Like, okay, you can see at a core, this is kind mm -hmm. of a pitch of person overall. Mm -hmm. But they're also, you know, you never find just a one type. You know, they're usually right. a pitta or a pitta vata, right? Mm -hmm. You can kind of get a sense that at a core level, they're sort of like that. Okay. You know? But there's other things layering on top of it. You can't be totally sure. Yeah. All right, so, wait, so did we finish the reading her constitution? Is, is that where you would end it at? With basically, pitta like, kapha. Pitta kapha? That's right. where you would find it. Because I'm seeing okay. a lot of that fire. 
you know, mm-hmm. I'm not seeing enough Vata to just put that as like That's a predominant yeah. constitution. Yeah. And look at all these major planets, you know, in, mm-hmm. in, in Earth sign, including the London Lord. Okay, yeah. So that's why I would say it's, it's a pit to cover constitution. Right. That makes sense. Um, okay, and so this is what I think. So I was thinking about, uh, we talked about this a moment ago before mm-hmm. we were recording, but I'll just re- say it again. Um, there's that part of Brihat Prashya where it says that the dasha, the maha dasha you're running, you can determine that you can, by seeing their constitution, you can guess what dasha, maha dasha they're running. And so that seems to imply to me that your mahadashas will set up your vikruti, like what you're kind of going to go through at this, mm-hmm. you know, and those mahadashas are long. They can be like 18 years for Saturn, you know what I mean? These, yeah. They can be long periods, so they can have a little bit of a say on, I, just, I remember when I was in a Jupiter period, I had, I was more kappa, and then when I went into a Saturn period, I, I started getting thinner, you know, and, and things like that. And, so, and you can also, you know, just to go slightly on to an aside from that is the maturation ages. Okay, yeah. You know, and also the way that they talk about your intern planetary phases of your life as you grow, Mm -hmm. you know. Those are times when, you know, in Ayurveda we also talk about that. The early life is a more kapha period. People are, you know, babies are chubby and they're growing. There's more mucus and cold type of illnesses. Yeah, and you're like pitta in the prime of your life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You can look at that also, but when you enter like teenage years, you're getting more in like a pitta, pitta time and... Okay, yeah. So there's that, but also you're looking at Mahadashas, you know, I think that sort of relates back to what I was saying about Vikruti being so relevant, because Parashra is saying that the constitution is basically, you can see through the Mahadasha, so it's it's sort of an always now type of thing. Yeah, and you know? that makes sense. You and you'll see people shift over their life. Like, yeah. You look at people who are older, especially, and you know, people often remark, well, I used to be you know, so much more like this. Mm-hmm. Usually they're almost a totally different body type. So it's yeah. like, yeah, that's something that I think is really relevant because, yeah, you might see Pitta but then maybe in this chart, this person is running a... Um, like a Saturn Mahadasha, yeah, right? it's and they're more looking towards, more Vata. Yeah, exactly. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, so the Dashas, as well as maturation ages and the natural Dashas, right? Like the, um, right. Yeah, like Venus rules from puberty to the age of 32 as a natural Dasha. So those could, could you know, what Venus's Doshas could speak more during that time. So I hope that makes sense. Ryan, what do you think about this? You want to jump in? It all sounds great. Cool. All right. Um, Okay, so I have uh, another interesting question. So how do you see, you know, there's this talk that Mercury is tridoshic. What do you think about that? How do you see tridoshic in a chart? Um, Well, I think it's totally right. I mean, Mercury is tridoshic. It's mixed, you know. Mm -hmm. All the doshas are potential in Mercury. And Mercury's mixed in every way, so that's what's so cool. Yeah, and Mercury's involved in balancing things too. Yeah. You know, so it makes sense that it's, that balance is, is all tied up in Mercury. Yeah. Also, if you look at Virgo, you know, as a sign that rules the intestines and the whole digestive process, and basically the function of Agni is to metabolize and through healthy metabolism to eliminate that which is not metabolized or not usable to the body. So the whole, like, I really see Virgo as having a huge influence in prana altogether, really. Mm. It's really describing reception release, you know, the pranic function, the breath, mm. the cycle, the pranic cycle. So... If you look at the doshas at their root, what are the doshas? They're just a play of life energy. You know? Doshas are just describing how prana is working. You know, to me, it almost seems like Ayurveda and astrology were much more meant to be intertwined in maybe much more ancient times. And then as the time has gone on and maybe in the darker ages, the Ayurveda people kind of, you know, there was more split. So they had to find maybe these more loose ways of seeing this stuff. Whereas if you are an astrologer, and you can really specialize in on that, you might not need to just use it as lo- like the more loose Ayurvedic things, like mm-hmm. in the middle of your life, your pitta, you know, like that's, yeah, yeah that's true, but like, you it's could true probably, on one level, yeah, but right? there's different levels, lot, yeah, you could probably hone in a lot more deeper with knowing the natal chart, exactly. right? Well, I'm going to go a step further on this and, okay, say, yeah. and assert that, astro- I mean, Ayurveda comes out of astrology, Okay. you know, in fact, all, all of traditional medicine comes out of astrology, Right. Astrology is the foundation of, of medicine. It yeah. really is. And if you look at these traditions like Tibetan medicine, you look at Chinese medicine, you look at Ayurveda, you really go into them, you see that their whole understanding is based on an existing astrological tradition that yeah. precedes them, you know? Yeah. So all of medicine is coming out of astrology. There's just really no doubt about that. You know, what you're saying reminds me of a quote, um, Hippocrates, you know, the father of modern medicine, doctors still take the Hippocratic oath or whatever before they be- can become a doctor. Right. 
he was quoted saying, one who practices medicine without knowledge of astrology is a fool. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Yeah, it's well, interesting. it's definitely true. I mean, they, they, they come out of... The, the relationship between astrology and medicine is that way. And so now that they're being more and more delineated, that's not really a good thing. That's not. But good, at the yeah, same no. time, you know, as astrology is becoming more popular, medical astrology is also becoming popular, and they're kind of there's a reemergence happening between the yeah. two of these fields, right? Yeah, and in the so, old days, like country doctors used to cast a progeny chart when they were called to right. come to someone. That's right. You know, when they were called to go see a sick right. person, they would cast a chart right then. So that's very interesting. There is a part of that in the Western medical traditions as well. I mean, in the Tibetan, you know, I'm studying Tibetan medicine. My teacher described to me her traditional education in Tibet. And they do about five plus years of medicine. And then they do another five plus years of astrology. Wow. And only when they're done with all of that do they get a degree as a Tibetan doctor. That's very Okay, cool. so it's totally, Tibetan, of course, is preserving their tradition much more. Um, cool. So traditionally, that's the course of the curriculum. It's just one thing. You don't look at them as two things. They're not two sciences, you know. You have to know astrology to be a doctor. There's also a Tibetan saying that um, an, astro an astrologer who doesn't know medicine is a mediocre astrologer. So they agree. And a, and, a, okay. and, a, and a doctor who doesn't know astrology is only a mediocre doctor. Ah. So you really have to know both. So there's quotes on both sides. There's quotes the on both sides, <laughs> exactly. So I think I remember hearing somewhere that you know, like even in these Chinese medicine books, they list things that um, are like can overpower your diet or things like you can be trying the best with your diet, but other things can overpower that. And that's right. like astrology was like the number one thing on the list, that's like right. your karma and things. So exactly. Well, that's why, you know, if you're just doing medicine, that's why part of why I got into astrology. All right. So now this is what I was also impressed with, like the actual remedies and advice you're given. So with this chart, mm -hmm. let's say she's leaning towards two pitta. It's kind of a summertime pitta right now. What okay. would you address? What would you recommend for her or him or whoever? I forget, but yeah. Well, I would say that she needs to oh, yeah. she needs to balance the fire element, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what's getting aggravated right now. Okay. The best way to do that is to take in cool and nourishing foods. So pitta has fuel, right? Pitta has fire, and one way to balance fire is to give it enough fuel to burn. Mm -hmm. So pitta needs right. substantial food. It needs to be sense. nourished, but it also needs to be cooled. So you definitely need to have eat at the right times in the day, that's a big thing. I feel like cucumbers are so good for when the pits are. Yeah, <laughs> taking more water element yeah. foods, cooling, grains, nourishing, fruits. Okay, all right. But substantiality is important. What, what uh, elaborate yeah. In other that. words, the food needs to have enough substance to it, enough weight to it, enough satiation that it actually feeds the fire. Because okay. if you eat too light with pitta, you know, light is one of the qualities of pitta. So if you eat too light, it gets vitiated. Like so, um, you need some like oatmeal, some stuff that sticks to you know. You yeah, need something, the fire, yeah, exactly. Something to burn long term. You don't want to be getting hungry all the time with pitta yeah. either, because then the, then the fire goes up, the liver gets aggravated, your pitta just vitiates. So eating some good complex carbohydrate type grains and exactly at the right time of the day and and that. the noon meal has to be a good meal. Yeah, yeah, you know, there was recently a, a guy who had a book on some talk show he was talking about with health, and he was saying how. If people eat at noon for a week and then eat at 12.30, even just that slight shift, that 30-minute difference, your body will be releasing all these stress hormones that entire 30 minutes because it's like, I'm supposed to eat right now. You know what I mean? And so you're, they've actually shown that in scientific studies that when you, when you eat at the right time, you basically reduce a tremendous amount of stress. You just save so many problems that don't even, you know, before they even well, it's start. Well, it's really important, especially at noon. I like to catch noon because then you're catching the sun while it's going to its peak and coming down rather than riding it coming down, you know? Yeah. So okay. see, that's an astrological thing. Yeah, that's right? astrological. I mean, yeah, that's, that's cool. Why do they say that? Well, they're looking at the position of the sun in the sky. That's and why noon time is the peak of the sun. So yeah. that's where your digestive power is the best. That's why Ayurveda says that's the time to eat your most substantial meal. Yeah, and like at night, it's not. And then don't eat exactly. too much. Right? When the sun goes down, Agni's going down. Yeah. Don't eat too much. So it seems like there are these great basic tips that you can get in Ayurveda, but when you really study astrology and Ayurveda, you can be a really much more thorough healer and address you know, very specific things. Even more interesting in the Tibetan tradition, when it comes time to harvesting herbs, 
they harvest herbs depending on, they use nakshatras Very cool. to determine when to go and, and harvest the herbs and which herbs to harvest. So cool. And the person leading the expedition, it has to be an auspicious day for him, astrologically. Oh, and only man. when all of those factors are lined up can the herb actually function as medicine. Oh, you see? That's so so cool. the whole tradition is coming out of astrology. There's yeah. just no doubt about it. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that was pretty So for this person, one more yeah. thing I would say yeah. is that they're experiencing pitta imbalance, we're presuming that right now. So they need to eat cooling, nourishing foods. Um, I was going to say one more thing about that. I can't remember what I was going to say now. Yeah, well, no, I mean, you're giving me a lot of good information. This is good. Um, yeah, so, well, all right, well, let's just flip it. What if they're more kapha? You basically, kapha, you need things oh, that add heat. Maybe. That's right. Okay. But I was going to say the one thing that will balance this constitution is going to be greens. Greens, okay. Because greens will keep kapha moving. It's light enough that kapha right. won't get overburdened. And greens also purify the blood, you know? So it keeps, so it keeps pitta in balance. It keeps the heat in check. They're yeah. cooling. And you're getting nour nourishment and good fuel. Exactly. Okay. And it's also going to help boost mercury because greens help that whole digestive process move along. It helps you eliminate very well and helps you absorb foods okay. really well. So... Pitta kapha will benefit from greens in particular. So summertime, it's a good time to have a lot of greens. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, anything else you want to add? Before we go and eat? <laughs> Before it's, we Before hit it's our new time, time for us? No, I don't have anything more to add yeah. unless you have any more questions. No, I think that was pretty good. I mean, basically, and, uh, we're looking at the elements, you know, play of the elements in the chart. Do you also look at, you know, say, okay, Venus is the water element. Like, if you just want to assess that water element, you just check Venus or, like, say you... You know, the, um, the Saturn is the Vata element, so you mm -hmm. want to just kind of like assess Saturn. Do you sort of do that? Yeah, you can do that. Because I feel like that's kind of something that makes sense in my own chart and other people's lives. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I was talking to him about and, oh, a moment ago, I really think it's very true in my experience. When it plants with Rahu or K2, it almost always causes that dosha or that imbalance. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Rahu and K2 are the imbalancing factors, really. Yeah. So. And so that's what a dosha means, right? Like a blemish, a spot, or right? a fault. Yeah, and so right. so check those things as well. But a dosha also is that which maintains the health of the physiology. So it goes both ways. Similarly, Rahu and Ketu, you know, when you work with them properly, uh, okay. that's when things start working out. You know, that's when yeah. your health comes into balance. So, so if you're going to be incarnate on Earth, you have to have a blemish, which astrology also speaks right. to because you have to have Saturn and Rahu or Ketu or all these cruel. Yeah, it's all there too. somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So you can also look at the lords of Rahu and K2, you know? But now you're getting more into the level of Ayurveda that's dealing with the mind, you know? We're not looking so much at the physical level now. So there's always these levels to health, too. That's super important to understand. So, okay, yeah. So the Rahu K2 would really feed into those deeper mental issues, like the pathology, like you are like saying Like you're going to see here that there's going to be a lot more Vata in the mind, right? Because mm -hmm. Rahu's in Cancer, so now we're learning to the moon. Worry. And the moon is already... worry. The moon's yeah. already in an air sign, yeah, right? Okay. Okay, K two's in Saturn sign. Fearful, yeah. like thinking, yeah, always cautious or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can get into levels too. You yeah, know, the way I like to look at it is like in terms of the five koshas, you know, the Vedantic understanding of the physiology is that there's these five layers to the human body. There's the physical, and there's the energetic, then there's the mental, then there's like the psyche, you know, yeah. or the soul level, and then there's the one that's prior to all of that, which is the causal level, you know. But health is in the first three. You okay. Know, the mind, the energy, and the body. So you have to look at all three, and they're all rippling into each other. So that's when you start getting into Rahu and K2, and the psychology of the person, the mental constitution, physical constitution. How do those come together? Yeah. So you can see how deep this can really get. That makes so much sense. And I mean, at some level, you know, you just cannot separate the, yeah, the the mental conditioning and the mind from your health because it seems like every alternate, every authentic old system of health that is still around, it's speaking about this idea that, you know, disease starts in on the inside first and then slowly exactly. manifests. That's a hierarchy of, yeah. of just anatomically, yeah. it's a hierarchy. I mean, I'm sure you can get a cold if you get a sickness, it's not, or, you know, I'm sure there's exceptions, but it does seem like a, in general, that's quite true. So you have to go beyond just looking at datus, you know, yeah. seven tissues, because that's just the physical body, but what's mm -hmm. controlling all of that? The mind is governing the energy flow, and the energy flow is then screwing up the body if and when it's not working right. Gotcha. So eventually you have to go to the mind to get to the root. Okay, cool. But the things that people do physically ends up screwing up their energy and their mind too. Mm -hmm. So you have to see how they both, yeah. both levels, right? The pathology is going in two directions all the time and then layering. So you need to be a good astrologer to see all this stuff. It seems. Well, astrology helps you see all yeah. these levels. That's yeah. why it's so useful. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because uh, 
just the base level of seeing a person or whatever. Yeah, that's not against It's not enough to just have somebody come into your office and you just say, okay, what are you eating? What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. You know, here's, you should eat this, you should do that. You know, and you have some sense of their psychology. How are you really going to get into it with them? You know, astrology is even a, a mode, you know, in which you can heal people at a whole other level. So, cool. I dig it. Ryan, what do you think? Background Noise brought to you by Nicole Brenny, Karen White, Channing Ayers, Laura Barat, and some Wilhelms. Tropical Charts Matter. <laughs> <laughs>